What's going on guys? Ishin from Caesar Media here. Today we got a special guest here, Brian from Fab9 Tuning. Now, Fab9 Tuning is the company that builds crazy Miatas. He's got the crazy, what, like 500 wheel horsepower MB? Yeah, 540 in the NB. 540 wheel horsepower Miata MB. Uh, NC that we're in now, and he just picked up an ND that we're gonna review later. But uh, we're gonna take this NC for a spin today, which has been fully built, got a, got his own turbo kit on it, mm -hmm. and it's estimated to be making around what 400 wheel ish. Yeah, I'd say right now, probably somewhere in the realm of, of 400. Yeah, um, which is we're still working on the calibration, which is insane out of a cute, innocent looking Miata. <laughs> we're gonna take it for a spin, give it a quick feedback on what the car feels like and talk about feminine tuning as well. Cool. All right, so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what clutch is in here? Yeah, that's nice, it's uh, ACT <laughs> six puck. All right. But it's grabby, we should have we should have warmed up a little. Yeah. Uh, gotten you a little acquainted with the car before It's you... actually, uh, oh man, it's actually really hard to drive. I actually owned a, an AIM Yara in the past, which was on stock and he got hit by a drunk driver and got totaled. And I'm stepping into this insane monster that makes triple the horsepower, basically. Yeah. So uh, we'll take it slow and try not to kill ourselves. It's good. <laughs> so <laughs> heavy. Yeah. Well, it's, it's just the engaging points really low to the ground. I right. Think. And Miatas have little tiny flywheels, so oh, they need it. they need the increased All clamping the force. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, stock. This car is what two liter. Yeah. So stock. This car is a two liter, naturally aspirated. Um, you know, pretty mellow. Pretty mellow car altogether. Uh, this was the NC has always been looked at as like the the boat of Miatas, which you know I've, I've always thought of it that way. And then I, I got one and realized it's only I want to say less than 200 pounds heavier than its its previous generation Miata. So okay. it looks a lot bigger. I mean the the space that it takes up looks a lot bigger, but it really isn't all that much heavier of a car. And to be to be blunt, it it just is a better platform to modify. Uh, stock ECU, stock internals take tons of power beyond the 2009 uh, generation okay. or year, I should say. Um, you know, so you, you buy one of these cars and out of the box you throw the uh, our EFR turbo kit on it. Um, fuel injectors, you can run the stock fuel pump to 300 plus horsepower and use the stock ECU to tune it. And it's you've got a very powerful very capable car with uh, pretty minimal investment, and it's it's a it's a nicer interior than the previous gen as well. Yeah, I can um, definitely tell. Yeah, it's, not it's nice way more refined. Pieces, yeah. I mean, I, I love the previous gen, and my NB is a, is a great car. But um, but if you're you know a young professional looking for something that uh, you know a weekend a weekend cruiser, uh, I think this is a better fit for you than. The go kart that the previous generations yeah, were sure, right. right so yeah. that you can only drive on the weekends only when it's sunny out because right. it's so ridiculous and uncomfortable and loud and yeah. noisy and all that yep so the, this efr kit you manufacture in-house i mean you got the manifold you got the intercooler piping and everything comes with the kit that you right offer on the yeah and this right? is the first this is the first time we've done an entire kit so uh you know we've we've done the efr manifold and downpipe for the previous gens uh, for years now, but um, I knew with this kit the the customers that are buying this are a little bit different than the previous gen customers and they want something that's uh, That's very complete. So you buy it and it installs, you know, everything comes with it and uh, And you get it tuned and you 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 know, you're done They're not interested in the winter project builds right. that maybe the previous, you know, previous gen owners are right um, Which is you know, I'm not I'm not talking that down at all. An enthusiast, I mean, that's what you enjoy doing is building the car. Sure. But I just feel like... More casual, like we can call it yeah. easily built. Absolutely. Just give it more punch that you can right. enjoy, yeah? Yep. So how much power can you push with your turbo kit on a stock block? So you just want to pick up the turbo, strap that on there with an intercooler. What's the maximum amount of like horsepower and torque that you can expect out of NC without... Yeah, well, it's funny, it. it's funny you say that because I have found that limit. Um, <laughs> I don't know if one of these GoPro shots will cover the back bumper, but it is literally melted from catching on fire. Yeah. <laughs> so I noticed that earlier. The stock, uh, the stock block, we knew it wasn't good to the amount of power that we were trying to produce, 
but um, it was more so. Uh, <laughs> this is crunch is so heavy. Sorry. <laughs> it was more so. Let's push this thing and see where the failure point is. Right. Because I'd I'd much rather be able to tell my customers, hey, listen, at 17 pounds, you're gonna blow up a stock two liter. Right. Um, and we gradually got to that point where the car was making really good power. I want to say safely on a, an 09 up stock internal uh, setup. Um, you know, some of my tuners might be able to, to advise a little bit more precisely. Um, but I, I'd say with this kit, you could probably make 370-ish, relatively reliable. Um, wow. And that might be a little high, but yeah. uh, you know, with uh, with a nice safe tune on it, I, I don't think that's a problem. Yeah. Um, these kits, they're, we set up to be very efficient. So um, I've always thought that it's it's a good idea to, to overbuild um, sure. what you're doing here. So, and so that's I, I think seven. that's what we did. That's 370 at the wheel. Right. So in a car that weighs how much now? It's completely stock. Uh, I want to say these are 26, oh, wow. maybe 2600 okay. pounds. So okay. Wow. So that's a lot of uh, power to come out of such a small car. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. We did the Willwood six-piston brakes. Uh, that's just a, a bolt-on kit that we sell. Um, and then the BC coilovers with a custom spring rate and. Uh, that's it. The rest of it's completely stock. So mm -hmm. um, it it leaves you with a, a nice, you know, we're driving down Michigan roads right now, and it's it's not terrible. No, it's very um, comfortable actually. I mean, other than the heavy clutch that I obviously need to get used to, because I've been driving my daily for a little bit. Uh, it's a very comfortable car to drive around, and you yeah. got full interior still. Right. So what's the tire? What size tires are you running, and what tires? Yeah. So on the back, there's a 275 drag radial, um, okay. and it's an NTO 5R, uh, and Again, that's this is a, another major difference between the previous gen and and the NC. Um, my NB, the largest tire I could get on there, uh, was a 255, and as you know, the, yeah, the power to weight ratio is more extreme on that car. Right. And so we don't we don't get traction anywhere. Yeah. Um, this car, uh, on a nice warm day, it'll nearly hook in first gear. So. Okay. To be able to apply that power makes a huge difference. Um, right. It's yeah. almost not worth having if you don't hook up. So. Right. Your NB is built to a point where you didn't burn out in third gear for gear. <laughs> right. And that's the fun of it. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that, well, that is a different kind of build, right? Yeah. You just want to push it to the limits and see what's. You right. Know, one of them is useful. The other one's hilarious. Yes. <laughs> Take it to Mexico and just uh, scare right. the crap out of people. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's what it's good for. Right. It's a nice on ramp right here with a wall on each side. Yeah, so I don't. don't, I don't so boost. don't hit that. Yeah. <laughs> Is this a, a 10 or something? No, it, it's really stable under power, so I understand so You're not going to uh, it shouldn't kick out on you unless you really mean to. <laughs> Can I make a right here? Uh, I don't think legally, but yeah, I would. <laughs> Alright, hit the first key. Yep. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that went up way too fast. That rev limiter. Yeah, no, it's a, way too quick. Yeah, first gear is not very useful. Way too quick. Um, you you got to think the car was geared for uh, 100 and I don't know, whatever, 150 horsepower. So, right. Not even that probably. Yeah, first gear is useless. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's up second. Out second's Jesus. about as low as I would launch it from. Alright, <laughs> Oh my god, this is a Miata, guys. <laughs> the Yeah, the two five liter, there's like no lag whatsoever. No, and I mean, and that was the beautiful thing with the two liter, is there's no lag, but this is really just, I mean, immediate response. Right. And how big is the turbo on this? It is a 6758 okay. EFR. Okay. And how much boost are you pushing? This is on 11 pounds. 11 pounds, okay. I feel like the boost kicks on really linear. Like yeah, no, and that that's the thing too is, um, you know, there's there's plenty of supercharger options out there for yeah. this car, and uh, the question is always whether or not to get a, a turbocharger or a supercharger. And previously, it's been the question that's asked is, well, what do you want, response or top end power? Sure. And uh, I believe that with the efficiency of our kit and the EFR turbo system. I mean, it doesn't get any more responsive than this. Mm -hmm. You can't tell me a supercharger is going to produce that much power that low uh, across the board. I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't stop. So, right. car just shoots up so fast in the RPM band right. that I don't have time to really think about shifting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you got to think the 
the gear ratios again are I mean they're set up for a car with very little horsepower yeah. to try to make it feel peppy um, and it did it felt okay naturally aspirated this is just a, a different story I don't know where I shift I don't ever have time to look at it <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those cars where you just feel when you shift like you, you really don't have time to look at the tag because it's just no, not everything at all. happens so fast. What I love about Miata is it's just how innocent it looks. Other than the tires, the big tires, the two seventy fives you said yeah. in here, it looks like a completely stock car. It just looks cute. Right. Yeah. Only when it starts falling, you realize that it's <laughs> faster than anything else out there, really. Yeah. And I I think to that note. That's probably my most enjoyable, you know, the most enjoyable part about driving uh, the NB and this car now is we've got, you know, the world famous Woodward Avenue uh, yeah. a mile from our houses and we shoot up and we'll run into very serious cars and embarrass them because right. they're just not expecting it out of. AKA Mexico for those of you who yeah, don't right, know about yeah. Woodward is. <laughs> right. I mean, you have shit on GTRs and whatever. Yeah race what like viper or something uh i mean the like yeah. gt500 yeah. mustangs oh, okay. um yeah acr viper uh i mean it's just the list is quite long of cars that a miata at some point has embarrassed so. drive me around in this thing. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, 2.5 in Miata just like changes the character of the car completely. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I don't feel that in the driver's seat. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. I feel like this is very driftable because it's so predictable. Yeah. The trouble and the way it's responsive. Don't let that fool you because these tires are not driftable. Oh, the tires. Yeah. Right. Uh, Sean, who's an excellent driver, uh, the road race guy who drove it yesterday. Right. We pull into a, a fully paved cul-de-sac and he uh, <laughs> he grabbed second gear like he was just gonna blast it around in a circle. Uh -huh. and it, it lurched forward, oh. like violently on him, in a straight line. <laughs> so <laughs> so we uh, we had a close call there, but. So I have come to realize that this car is really hard to get used to with the heavy clutch and the RPM just shooting up to the sky as soon as you hit the throttle. So I'm gonna let the expert drive it for a little bit and see how the car feels in the passenger seat. Yeah, <laughs> you drive it so much better than me. <laughs> you know this. The stuff you see in this So in front of me is a dually E350 <laughs> van. I'm pretty sure it doesn't come like that stuck. <laughs> Look at that oval fenders. Right? Yeah. I've that, never seen that before. That's weird. And it looks like the rear end was out of a junkyard. It's got a, it's got the writing on it, you know. The funny thing is, he doesn't even have a trailer hitch. Like he doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't even have the hook for it. It's not for towing. I'll show no tow. I'll show no tow. <laughs> what wow. is this thing? <laughs> wow. It looks like something from that video game. Uh, Twisted metal? Yeah, just Remember do whatever. That? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're actually still in the tuning process for this car because the setup is so new. And right now what we're doing is uh, some fast and furious magic here. With the stock ECU, say I want to run, you know, we've got an ethanol gauge in the glove box. Right. Um, say I want to run, you know, E85 during the summer. And then when the winter blend comes around, I need to change it. Uh, the cool part about this is Joe at Dynatronics is 
uh, using AccuTech and you hold down cancel on the cruise control and you're able to shift between multiple fuel maps. Okay. So say I've, I've got to fill up uh, with E85, I dump that in there, hit cancel. Uh, I'm now at an E85 tune. So mm. on the fly, that's all stuff you can do with the stock ECU, which is nice. the major difference between, I think, the investment you have going into an NC versus the previous gen. So, guys we're done with the review now hope you enjoyed the video there's uh, no better way to end the video than the standing burnout in a fab 9 tuning call and guys that was 275 on drag radios and we smoked that up yeah so, they're that's... probably garbage now yeah <laughs> <laughs> but anyways i hope you enjoyed the video if you have any inquiries uh hit up fab 9 tuning for all the go fast parts for your miata and i will see you in the next review thanks guys peace